KBYP finally getting around to part 10 of transmission lines and antennas to show how modern science, quantum and nuclear, says that antenna, so-called radiation, which is not radiation, it's emission, is caused by, in their term, charge acceleration. I look at it as collision because collision is a acceleration with a negative sign. A engine puts power into a vehicle to make it accelerate, and the brakes make negative acceleration by causing friction and, and dissipating the energy in the chassis as heat. Charge collision. Charges collide, their energy spews out to the side more or less. You'll find that in the uh, MIT Open Courseware document by Hutchinson. If you haven't seen it, look at my uh, bibliography video, Reading Sources. And the link to the MIT OCW is in there. And get a bottle of aspirin with morphine if you try to read it. Here's a pulse generator, maybe a TDR, exciting a dipole feed point. Down here, electrostatic field lines moving. At the end of that electrostatic field line, maybe there's a magnetic field line pointing at us. We can't see it. It's just a a dot at the end. If we go underneath the antenna and look up, we'd see that vector moving around. That energy travels to the left, to the end of that dipole arm, which is a transmission line. And by transmission line theory, an open circuit and a shorted circuit line undergo a total reflection. So for clarity, I drew a retreating field line on top of the wire. Think and look at that very, very carefully. But that field line has is related to charges and energy that have reflected and is traveling back from whence it came at about the speed of light. And in my uh, low, thin wire 80 meter dipole video, I showed that I calculated that speed at 0.951c, which is the speed of light, so slightly slower than the speed of light, which is screaming fast. There are electrical charges here. That field line is caused by a, a charge or charges that are screaming out the length of that wire through diffusion current. The electrons are not moving from here along this path to here, but it's something called diffusion current. The field lines are what move. After reflection, that all comes back to the feed point. None of that process is antenna. All of that process can be reckoned as that approximation even used in electrical engineering. That's, that's a very crude drawing, but it's reckoned as a series resonance circuit in a recent issue of the IEEE Antennas and Propagation Society magazine. Not ARL, but antenna science. It is not that circuit. But it appears that way as measured by electrical equipment attached to the feed point. If it is that, then I showed you in previous videos that the fields inside that capacitor and around that inductor are conserved. These are conservative. This represents the antenna radiation. Because a resistor loses electrical energy as heat, and in the antenna, this is, represents the transfer function of that energy from the antenna being thrown off into space and, so to speak, lost or wasted. It isn't wasted. It is going to serve the purpose of being emitted by an antenna. Since and if that's the case, then these fields associated with the antenna are not what are radiated. And Dawson, IEEE Broadcast Technology Society, in his paper on slant-fed antennas, says that a, a sign signal cannot radiate. Why? It's a smoothly changing function and there's no discontinuity to cause radiation. Well, modern science now knows that the discontinuity occurs somewhere when these charges collide and or perhaps the fields collide. The quandary I'm at, without yet being able to measure where these fields are, is how can a dipole with charges coming towards the center on both sides, if both these legs are transmission line. And I showed you in the how to build a correct dipole, the theory that these arms have to be transmission lines because they have the characteristics of a transmission line of diameter, heights above the ground, and, and 
and the reflection at the end. How do charges collide? The wires don't touch each other. They can't collide. There are fields at the feed point. They can, so to speak, collide. And there are two things that I would call your attention to to consider. This, as the term I use, charge collision or deceleration. As it being able to emit energy. But also there's modern quantum physics principles that throw out the idea that matter cannot be created or destroyed and that they now know that, so to speak, my term colliding, colliding electromagnetic fields under certain circumstances can literally create electrons. These, these fields, an example in the text I read, the, the, these passing fields can interact and literally create matter. They can create electrons. And that admits the possibility of this feed point being a point where electrons are generated and thrown off into space. And if so, there must be electromagnetic fields associated with that streaming off into space. <clears throat> but those fields going off into the ether are not these fields. Because these fields in this process of going out and back are conserved to the wire. More exactly, conserved to the charges on the wire. If you'll study these collision mechanisms, charge, charge acceleration, or in my reckoning, also deceleration and collision, these charges act like billiard balls. They can bounce, they can collide with each other straight on. They can collide at angles and give off radiation at angles or emission at angles. We, we say that electromagnetic fields and charges can have properties of light. They can reflect and be refracted and bend and all that. But if there is emission here at the feed point that's off perpendicularly in a plane, and that's the only explanation I can find for my 20-meter dipole burning holes in Europe, but no matter how I shout and turn the power up 250 watts, they can't hear me in South America off the end of the antenna. That has to be a plane of emission coming off that feed point. The question is how to maximize that, because the ideal... <laughs> The ideal conditions for an antenna are a characteristic resistive value at the feed point that is the same as a transmission line for maximum power transfer into the antenna, emitting all the energy from the antenna without losses, and that's fairly easy to do, but also directionality. One of the ideals in, in antennas is a Yagi, believing that they're highly directional. They are not. That's marketing hoax. They are poorly directional. So how to make this structure emit energy in one direction? Well, it appears without doing field testing yet, and I can't do it yet, that that 20 meter dipole is emitting a sheet of energy off that feed point. And the feed point is aimed right at Europe. But they can't hear me off the end. About the best I can do is New York State off the north end. And that's not great. And that's with more power. So something about this is highly directional, and that's the ultimate goal of an antenna system. We get huge apparent increases in power, EIRP, effective isotropic radiated power, by having a directional emission. And I should not be able to work Europe with a lot on CW or anything else with a dipole under these band conditions. Everybody else, so to speak, is using amplifiers and beams. And I just embarrass them. They can't figure it out because it completely flies in the face of antenna theory. But the theory I'm working on is that this dipole, not just because it's a dipole, because a 40 meter dipole is a dipole and it doesn't do that is doing that because of something I term dielectric steering. And I've never seen that term anywhere, but if you're here and you look at this 20 meter dipole, it will become immediately obvious if you walk around what's probably happening, and that is this. This is a rough diagram looking at the end of my 20 meter dipole. That's a rectangular inch and a quarter uh, conduit body from one of the home stores just $7 piece of plastic, and that's the end of the wire. We're looking at the end of the 
number six wire that comes off the right side of that antenna toward us this way. Notice the box is tilted. By accident, where I placed this antenna and the way I supported the feed point, because there's nothing up here to attach to, I tied a cord underneath. In fact, actually I drew that wrong. It looks like under that. I tied the cord, paracord underneath the housing and picked up and it tilted the feed point. You know what direction that is? That direction is exactly two things. That direction is exactly towards Europe. That direction is off the top of the feed point, not the side. And that direction, I didn't realize it when I put it up, but it is exactly aimed at a big oak tree about a wavelength away and exactly in line with fairly good sized branches of that tree that go out over the feed point. This is a massive dielectric. Dielectric constant of eight. It's wood, full of water, huge dielectric constant, and therefore there must be huge field lines between the antenna and that, in that shape. Now, my theory is, and I can't prove it yet without testing, but this antenna tends to emit energy at the feed point, and this is steering it. And I look this direction, that's, that's north-northeast. That's, that's Europe, folks. And they cannot hear me from the direction that we're looking onto that view, no matter how I shout. I think I've made one poor contact to South America with that antenna with 150 watts. But I'm barnstorming Europe with one watt. Houston, there's something funny going on here. The 40 meter dipole doesn't do this. The 40 meter dipole does not have this orientation. But through the magic of the cell phone, there it is. See the gray feed point housing? Tilted exactly at the tree. The right side view is here. Of course, I'm not at the end of the wire. That's 17 and a half feet up. But there's the right side view of that tilted feed point and it is exactly in line with that great big branch sticking up over there and I'll guarantee you there's field coupling between that feed point and that tree because if the field lines are coupled to ground and the tree is grounded guess what there's a 40 meter dipole same construction same feed point there's a tree under it but um, it acts like most dipoles generally omnidirectional I got no trouble working South America off that antenna. But I can't buy a contact for no price off the end of that 20 meter antenna. I got one to New York State poorly with more power. That opens up the possibility of some really interesting things. But beware that you don't gloss over what I've shown you previously to just focus on this because you'll miss something very important. And in that diagram has been months of study and consideration on my part because there are some strange things that have to be happening there in order for that to work. So be aware that you don't just jump to the Boy Scout level and try to go throw some, build something and throw it up. It may not work. Study that. Think about that. Think about those propagating fields. Read about transmission line principles, especially in radio antenna engineering by Laporte. Not ARL's pablum. And read about electrostatics. Basic principles of electrical and magnetic fields. And there is... There have to be some weird things happening here that are... Kind of implied in that diagram. But study on it and think on it. And see if you can get the same results. Okay, BYP.